Hi everyone, here's the Book Chemist once again and today for something completely different I'm going to talk about and recommend two great non-fiction books by one of my very favorite writers, Jonathan Lethem. These are The Disappointment Artist and The Ecstasy of Influence, which I believe you should read and can have a great time with, with maybe just a little asterisk. Let's see why. First, The Disappointment Artist. This is a very slender collection of just a handful of essays. I think there's seven or eight essays in this thing. It has a beautiful cover, by the way, if you can get your hands on this edition, it's uh, rather beautiful. And it is a cohesive collection of essays. In here, Lethem talks about his passion for some popular cultural artifacts, more or less pop and more or less known. He talks about um, why when Star Wars came out he went to see it 21 times in the course of a summer. He discusses his relationship with John Kirby and Stan Lee and the feud between these two comic books, uh, comic book titans. But he also talks about his own personal life, about growing up as a bookish kid in Brooklyn and navigating a rather rough urban reality and in general in all of these essays he intertwines his thoughts and concerns when it comes to these writers and comic book artists and actors and directors with his own personal story especially the story of his adolescent years. And the final essay in this collection, which is a bit of a cluster essay where he discusses a selection of uh, cultural artifacts that were very relevant to him, records and movies and books, in a way brings together the entire collection and gives it a grander narrative that, had, that revolves most notably around uh, the impact that the loss of his mother, of Lethem's mother, had on him when he was a teenager. In this sense, this feels almost like a novel, or, or, or anyway, a, non a narrative, a work of narrative non-fiction, let's put it that way, that is constructed through essays, each of which is focused on a specific cultural artifact or creator. And you do not necessarily need to know all of the artifacts and creators here discussed to enjoy the book, but it helps. The title essay, The Disappointment Artist, is about the novelist Edward Dahlberg, which I had never heard about before, and I was still able to enjoy the essay very much, and actually it left me wishing to read maybe one or two of Dahlberg's works, um, maybe not too uh, deeply because it doesn't sound necessarily like my, like my type of novelist, but yeah, it stirred my interest and in general that essay also discussed uh, creative writing and the pursuit of um, writing, even while you know that your writing and your efforts probably are not going to survive through history, or to put it more bluntly, uh, probably not that many people will even read them in the first place, but that's still something you wish to pursue and that's noble. Uh, there's another essay in here about the uh, actor-director John Cassavetes, uh, that one I was maybe a little bit less able to follow it through, I, I think I, I needed to have seen at least one or two of the movies to understand it to the fullest extent, but still it makes sense what I want to say is to read this collection even if you're not familiar with uh, John Ford's The Searchers, which is the subject of another essay, or the, com the Marvel comic books of the 60s and 70s, or Star Wars, etc, etc. I warmly recommend The Disappointment Artist. The Ecstasy of Influence, uh, that's a little bit different. Not because it's worse, I mean, it's going to sound as if it's a worse book than Disappointment Artist, far from it, it's just that it's a very different book, and you can see it from its sheer size. This is a much heftier collection of non-fiction writing, and it's n even though uh, this is another ambitious project, Project. Here, uh, Lethem collects not only uh, simple non-fiction and essays, there's also a few short stories in here, there are some introduction to the works of other people that he wrote, to uh, books by Shirley Jackson, books by Thomas Berger and G.K. Chesterton and many others, and there are some crazier, very shorter, more hectic pieces that kinda walk the line between fiction and non-fiction and uh, invective as a genre, I guess. And Lethem tries with the introduction, with some commentary, to uh, try to put bring all of this together into some sort of grander narrative here too, where these essays are offered as an insight into the mind of 
him as a creator, as a novelist of his evolution, as a fan of, pop of popular culture, of painting, or all, of all sorts of art forms. By the way, he is not that much of a fan of the term pop culture. Uh, j uh, let's just call it culture, goes one of these of the essays in this collection called Against Pop Culture, and it's one of the, uh, the best ones. The other thing that's probably, uh, that I probably have to mention is that the title essay in The Ecstasy of Influence is actually pretty famous, and you probably already know it, and if you don't, I recommend you read it, because it's very influential, it's a bit of a quirky uh, creation, and if you don't know much about it, I'll let you discover it by yourself. Uh, absolutely do read The Ecstasy of Influence, the essay, and there, I'm going to put links in the description box. Um, that one and maybe a few others, a few other essays in this collection are actually available online for free if you want to get a taste of Lethem's nonfiction. And The Ecstasy of Influence is not the only influential seminal essay in here. There's one called Rushmore vs. Abundance that opposes that tendency to canonize a few selected male writers from each uh, literary current um, and discusses more uh, processes in the world of myth making when it comes to literature. Uh, there's an essay in here where Jonathan Leatham uh, criticizes James Wood's review of his novel The Fortress of Solitude, which sounds lame, but it's actually a brilliant essay. It feels like reading a street fight between two tough guys, and let's say that Leatham won. Uh, hands down. There's a terrific one called Bowels of Compassion, where Lytham discusses the life of the American writer on book tours, uh, where these guys have to take a flight every morning at 5 a.m. and go to the other end of the country and have a radio interview and then a television interview, and maybe not that many people know who they are, and it's a difficult situation, and it's a hilarious but heartfelt article. Um, and or, or essay, call it what you will. Uh, my main issue with the ecstasy of influence, and the reason why I may be, maybe I'm not that ready to recommend it exactly to everyone, is that unlike the disappointment artist, here not all of these essays are steeped in the, let's call it anecdotal, or in storytelling. Now I'm going to compare Lytham to a writer he is parallel to very often in writing and criticism and reviews and essays and by fans, and also, by the way, in my PhD thesis, and this writer is Michael Chabon, and I believe by reading some essays by Lethem and some interviews with him that he is a bit fed up with the comparison. And I can 100% understand why. I do believe that the, the, the similarities between these two guys, most notably the fact that they um, often talk about comic books, are generally overstressed and that they are often put together in the same cauldron, even though the writing at the end of the day is actually very, very different. And they are rather different types of writers, and their style is completely different, and the tone of their books, the, the scope of their books, very different. It's a bit like comparing um, Philip K. Dick and H.P. Lovecraft, which were respective influences on Lethem and uh, Chabon. Uh, at the end of the day, they are not that very similar after all, if not that sometimes they put monsters in their stories, and that's it. Unfortunately, I know Shaban, so I have to talk about him. Sorry, Mr. Leatham. Um, one of the things I love about Michael Shaban's essays in books such as Mammoth for Amateurs or uh, Maps and Legends, which is somewhere over there. Uh, do read Maps and Legends, it's amazing. The brilliant thing about Shaban as an essay writer, I think, is that all of his essays, all of his non-fiction writing is always steeped in storytelling. Very often, Chabon's essays have a very clear beginning, middle and end, like a story. He tells you something, a story about himself or about a person he knew, and sometime in the course of the story, usually in the second to last page, he also gives you an interesting point, an interesting reflection on a topic in religion or in um, uh, popular culture. 
culture or in the world of comic books or maybe uh, he discusses a certain writer and that always makes these essays very entertaining very stimulating to read very interesting even when the essays and i have to recognize this are not talking about anything much at all there is a um, an interesting one in Mendut for amateurs where he discusses the time where uh, when uh, his dad gave him a bunch of baseball cards or maybe it was the other way around he gave his dad a bunch of baseball cards and I it was an interesting essay but I remember thinking at the end Michael are you sure there's a story in here it just seems to me like you're talking about something that happened to you yesterday. Lethem can do the same and as I mentioned especially in The Disappointment Artist he anchors his essays into his own personal story but when Lethem wants to get cerebral and technical and wants to go in depth into the works of an artist or writer or director he does he actually gets very cerebral and occasionally the essays in The Ecstasy of Influence can get a little bit difficult to wrap your head around at least they were for me I have to say and sometimes when you don't quite know the writer he's talking about he's addressing when he discusses a relatively minor figure in American modernism which he believes shouldn't be that minor if you haven't read that writer it may feel a little bit like a chore reading these essays but I'm also positive because I've experienced this once or twice in the course of the collection that if you are interested in that stuff if you know that writer these essays are all the more rewarding that happened to me for instance with Lethem's book on talking at fear of music I do believe that if you are if you don't love that record Maybe the book will fly over your head, but if you are really into it, you're going to enjoy the discussion very much. And at the end of the day, that's the whole point of reading an essay or an article on an artist. Why would you do that if you don't know the guy, unless you're getting a good story in return? I guess, but at the same time I don't want to say that because that way you're not going to discover anything new. And there's a beautiful essay on James Brown in here, possibly the longest in the collection, and I'm not a big James Brown fan, I only know the songs everyone knows, and that essay may be one of the very best Lethem has written, it reads like an amazing short story. Okay, no, I changed my mind, I take it back, you have to read all of the essays in The Ecstasy of Influence, even the ones that tend to get a little bit obscure and cryptic and deal with people you don't know because that way you're going to discover some, am some amazing new stuff and yes be aware that not all of these essays are going to be a walk in the park but if if you need that go take a walk in the fucking park overall i enjoyed both of these books very very much um bottom line probably is everyone should read the disappointment artist um maybe excessive influence check it out once you're already a big lethem fan uh, also, Lithem has recently published a book, a collection of writing on writers called, I think, Less Alo More Alive and Less Lonely, or something of the sort. Uh, if I can get my hands on it, and I'll get my hands on it soon, uh, maybe I'll let you know what I think about it, uh, if you're interested. And let me know about your experience with Lithem non Lithem's nonfiction. I'll put links to some essays by the guy in the description box. Let me know in the comments what you, what you think of his articles and essays, uh, if you find them cerebral and difficult, or if you find them rather enjoyable. Also read uh, Chabon's Maps and Legends, it's another. It's an awesome book. If you're talking as fans, read Lethem's Fear of Music, and in a second you're going to find links on the screen to some others of my reviews and videos, uh, to some other, to some of, uh, some great novels by Jonathan Lethem actually. And I will see you in the next video. Thank you for watching. Bye guys.